have a divine right to reclaim the property that you were deep, deep, um, dispossessed from, particularly if it has not yet been occupied by someone else. If it remains the property of the bank, you have a divine right to reclaim that property by perfecting your promised land record, your certificate of vacant possession and entitlement, your certificate of survey and title, and your deed of right and title. But you must do it properly. And what I'm keen to do is, is have this book prepared for people so that it can be presented properly. All right, very good. Thank you, Frank. Uh, we have a phone line question here from California. Uh, California, are you there? Hi, good evening. Hi. Yes. Hi, Terry. Hi, hi Frank. How are you? Hi, good. good. Thank you. Uh, last week, I, I raised a question of uh, the workings of bankruptcy court. Yeah, in, yep. in and how I promised that I would be following up on that. Um, okay. I I have not now. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm not here to break promises because of of doing what I've done on the on the promised land record, and because of the work on the Great Ritz. I I'm not comf confident yet in saying to you that I know the workings yet of the bankruptcy court to give a, a straight answer. So. Okay. Um, I, I I know that this is obviously an issue that you're facing or have faced. Yeah. Yes. Time. Yeah, the, the 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 trustee is being uh, very demanding and, and wanting more more money payments as far as the mortgage goes, and um, it's getting to a point now where she is probably going to suggest to the bank that we cannot afford the home, and she might she might um, uh, convert it to or try to convert it to to Chapter Seven liquidation. Yep. Well, what I'd say to you. Um, if, have you have you begun the uh, EDP process to vital statistics? The EDP process? No, I have not begun that. Okay. Is there any reason? I'm, I'm, you I'm, I'm fairly I'm fairly new to your calls. I you know my, the okay. last last week was the first call I was actually on live, and over the past this past week I've been trying to catch up on some of the recordings. Yeah. Well, what I'd suggest you go and have a look at is go and have a read of the section there on ecclesiastical deed polls on the home page. Okay. And and think of it this way. You, you, you've heard the concept of a claim of right before, yeah? Okay. What the ecclesiastical deed is effectively is a claim of right. So if you follow through on that with the vile statistics, then the, foreclo sorry, the bankruptcy is against their fiction. Yeah, it's against their their Roman fiction. It's not okay. against you. It's not against your flesh. It's against their property. So if you can if you can get your ecclesiastical deed poll process underway, then you can follow up with that with your promised land record and the perfection of the claim of right that we're discussing tonight. Yeah. Okay. Now is that in the ecclesiastical law section? Yeah, go to the home page and you'll see a little blue box that says Ecclesiastical Deed Poll. Okay, so oh, I, see it. Oh, yeah, I, I, I see it right here. I see it right here. Okay, I'm yeah, clicking sorry. on it right now. Okay. There's, there's a lot to oh. read, but have, have yeah. a read. Yeah. Uh, when you get stuck, there's the uh, university.uk.info, but, but I would suggest you read that um, quick smart. And okay. then after that, um, you know, by the time you're ready to do that, this other section on how to save your home, which is a new box that you will see on the home page, will be ready to view. So okay. that's what I suggest you do. Now I know I didn't answer your question about bankruptcy court, but I but quite frankly, I don't think that's the relevant answer you need. I think what you need is is how to uh, get out of this uh, from under this foot that's on your head, isn't it? Right. Well, I've given you the first part of that answer. Okay, great. All right, thank you. All right. Great, thank you. Good question. All right, <clears throat> we have a question on the chat here. Uh, where can one go to find an unbiased written record of what the Khazarians and the Venetians were about? 
That is an excellent question. Now, here's the problem that that um, that you face when you talk about it. It, it. it is the most suppressed of all history. And hopefully people aren't surprised by that, but, but it is. And when you do, in fact, go and see uh, those that have written um, some of the history out there, and there are some books on the back of uh, university.uk.info, and I asked Gerald if if he can make available some, some links to that, the single biggest problem, um, and we probably don't want to overly promote it because, because I have the biggest concern about it. My biggest concern is this. Just as the words Roman Catholic are used as a catch-all for anybody that's born Roman Catholic as opposed to Roman cult, or the word Muslim is used to catch anybody that's born a Muslim, apart from being born into the Saudi royal family. The word Jew is used to catch anybody that is born into the Jewish faith and not a few specific families that be quite happy to be Muslim, uh, Christian or purely satanic. So my concern when you read history about the Khazars is that whenever there is a revelation of the malfeasance of these people, it almost always comes back to using these catch-all labels which deliberately encapsulate everybody and not simply a handful. And to me, that is what brings it down because I'm not here to cast aspersions on anybody that is uh, um, uh, considered themselves a, a Catholic or a Muslim. And even though we said that section there about the, the label Jewish, you know, if someone is born Jewish, I hope they would view themselves more as an Israelite or a Hebrew uh, or a Yahudi if they read a little bit about their history rather than simply just using these catch-all phrases. So I know that's a bit of a long-winded answer, but my, that's my only concern. The short answer is there's almost no unbiased history that doesn't start using these catch-all phrases, which, uh, which by the way, <clears throat> the Anti-Defamation League, League is quite happy for people to use because then they simply say you're anti-Semitic, you're a Jew hater, and then they can simply use that as a, as a defence. We're not here to use those catch-all phrases. We're here to forensically identify a few thousand people that use the good of the world as a human shield. Yes, very good. Thank you, Frank. All right, back to the uh, phone lines. We have Be Free, 1958. You there? Yes, hello. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, Frank. Um, I'm calling to have a couple of questions. Uh, I am in the process of the dishonor phase of the EDP. I sent the, the um, EDP. It was not responded to. The time has um, expired. So I'm in the process of doing the dishonor. However, in going over the instructions, um, I'm, I'm a bit confused about what the instructions say because it says to um, one thing is to use the um, Eucadia date. And what I'm confused with is it says use the date of the bill, and then it also says the date of the, that the trust was created. So it's two separate, use the issue date or the trust date. It seems to be saying use both, but... Okay. Well, I'm sorry for the confusion. And, and to help me clear it up, and then to help me clear it up for everybody... Can you tell me which page that you're looking at so that I can look, go to it as well? I'm looking at the um, deed of ecclesiastical dishonor on um, one heaven, and it's yep. the, and down toward where you can click on the link to actually see the deed of ecclesiastical dishonor. It is yep. um, it's number um, two. two. Is that right? Number yes. two? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you for this, by the way, and we'll, we'll clear it up now. Um, look, I'm, the English language is not the easiest language, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm sorry for any confusion. So the, the point you're looking at here, when I look at the instruction, is, is which number, which point? Two. Uh, it says replace with the Eucadian, Eucadian time, time signature, yeah. Signature based on time of issue of bill. Then it says also obtain when 
creating your trust number. So is it the issue of the bill date time or the trust number that I've already created? I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's um, yeah, it, it, it creates a confusion. Um, uh, so it's, it's saying um, what it was trying to say, and this is a confusion, is um, replace the number using the tools that you used when you went and created your trust number. So what it should have said was, go back to the time tool okay. that you should be familiar with to replace the number. That's really what it should be saying. And of course, it doesn't say that. So you're absolutely spot on. And I will clean up that um, confusion. So um, what you'll see uh, in a few minutes when at the end of this call is uh, it should be on the time of the issue of the bill and I will remove that bit referring to trust numbers which is creating a confusion I, I do apologize okay okay and, okay thank you and the bill that it's speaking of is the bill of lading correct now okay. understand that that when we describe these four sections of a bill we are describing the DNA behind any form of bill in their system. It's the origin of their billing system. And, the, and what happens in their system is a bill goes through, through four, four primary evolutions to become perfected. And the first form is a bill of lading. Then the second form is a draft. The third form is accepted. And the fourth form is an endorsed. So, yes. All right? Okay, and, and thanks for that. Here, the, my next question is, that cleared that one up, is in the same section, and it, and it deals with the um, proper case. It's the next section below that where it says replace your first name with your first name, and it, then it says use proper case. This is important as the name should reflect what their roles will list. Well, it says use proper case, but on my birth certificate, it's all caps. So, yeah, no, I understand that. In fact, um, um, because of that, I'm going to cl clean it up as well. It should, and technically, we should from here on in. And it does, by the way, anyone that's done it this way does not impact the success of their notices, but it probably should be the same as the live born record and being lowercase. So, again, I'm going to correct, correct that. So, point two and point three have confusions in the instructions that I will clean up. So, again, I apologize, but I just want to thank you for pointing those out to me so I can have them cleared up. Okay. And and the last and final thing, hopefully, for tonight is, and I appreciate you um, putting the um, EDP for court because I have, I'm the gentleman that spoke to you, and I my date is next, uh, this, about two weeks from now, where I'm going to, supposed to be going in for sentencing, and I'm going to um, actually do the um, necessity duress conversation. But now that you have this EDP for court, should I send this EDP in prior to me going in and speaking, or should absolutely. I just go? Okay. A absolutely. I mean, th they can read. I mean, if they want to dishonor it, let them dishonor it. But um, okay. there's no point making it harder for yourself. I, I would send it into the clerk of the court and say, there you go. Have a nice day. Okay. And, and if they don't want to follow up, well, that's their problem. Okay, and you answered the other question. I was going to ask, who do you send it to? And it is the clerk of the court. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. I appreciate that, and I relinquish it back to you. No, thank you. Thank you for highlighting those issues that need to be cleared up in the instruction. I appreciate that. That was very helpful. Thank you, thank you Frank, for everything that you're doing. That's right. And everybody that's helping you. Yep. Great. Thank you for, for joining us tonight as well. Okay, we have a question here. Um, Frank, what if we don't have a mortgage or, uh, I'm not sure that's saying debt, maybe might be saying that, uh, and would like to acquire some land to support and sustain your family? And that was back to that process regarding the uh, promised land record, please. So if well, you don't really have a mortgage, what, yep. is a way, what is a good way to acquire the land that you need for um, your family? Well, I'm really glad that that question was asked because that is to the heart of this. Um, if you read under 44.5, it gives you the 